I'm Chris Honecker. You know, I know we're in in school for some of us are in school and you know poor cards and all that. Everyone wants their grades. And certain subjects are determined by certain letter grades. That's in some places. Other places are determined by numbers. Well, in this case, it's a lot more focused on, you know, let's say for example, you have English, math, science, social studies, um, PE, and you have certain letter grades. Of course, A, B, and the highest. Um, you know, A above average or excellent. Um, B is actually above average. A is excellent. B is above average. C is average. D is below average. And F is failing. Or alpha incomplete. And for conduct, you will have, of course, E, excellent. S for satisfactory. N for needs improvement or U a satisfactory. Yeah, no one wants the N or the U. But everybody tries to strive for the quote unquote straight A's. Because, especially if you're kids, if you get straight A's to school, you know your parents, you know, will try to hook you up with, you know, all the stuff that you like and stuff that you want. You know, we're going to discuss a little bit about that tonight. But this time, it's from a spiritual standpoint. What's your grain system like spiritually? Let's go inside Red State Church. The one and only, our associate pastor, Pam Hove, is standing by tonight. It's all about the report card. If I were you, you might want to get like a little sheet of paper and kind of fold it in half and take notes on this one. And for every subject that's presented on this one, grade yourself, will you? See where you are spiritually. Pam Hovis, it's all. Let's go. Let's go resonate. excuses that kids give when or maybe you gave them when uh, you were young about how bad uh, why your report card was bad and the excuses you gave you know for um, why you didn't get your homework turned in like my dog ate it the dinosaur next door stole it and all those kind of <laughs> quit laughing Haley but, you know, I, was, I had these cute little things. I want to read these to you, and you'll all understand here in a minute. Junior was talking to Dad, and he said, Dad, why did you sign my report card with an X instead of your name? And Dad said, I didn't want your teacher to think that anyone with your marks has parents who can read or write. I thought that was funny. <laughs> Tommy said, um, I, Tommy, I am not at all pleased with the report card your teacher sent me about your conduct in school. And Tommy said, I knew you wouldn't be, and I told her that, but she went right on and made it out that way anyways, just like a woman. I'd have gotten in trouble for saying something like that. Johnny's mother said, Johnny, this isn't a very good report card. Are you trying? And Johnny said, 
Yes, my teacher said I'm the most trying boy in class. Does this resonate with any of y'all? I'm telling you, uh, report cards aren't always a good thing. Sometimes we look forward to them with dread. Sometimes we think we might have done good, and then when you get it, you realize you didn't do so good, so you're not so happy with it. Is that right? So tonight, in case she's wondering, my message is on a report card or a progress card. And what we're going to do to be a little different tonight, Sister Carmen's going to pass out a piece of paper to every adult. And you fold it in half and you put on the front of it my report card. <laughs> and I know it's going to be different, but I thought it might be kind of fun just to see what y'all come up with. And uh, when I give you the, since I didn't have time to get them made out today, we ain't going to go there, but I'll, I'll tell you what the, the subject is and you'll put it in there and I want you, when I tell you to, to put what you think your grade is in that subject. Okay? This is a spiritual report card, guys. It's not a... Okay. So, re progress reports or report cards, we have all gotten them in our lives, either from school or from work. Don't you hate that when they call you into work and say, we need to go over your, pro your progress report for the year and see if you deserve a raise or not, and, and this is where we'd like you to improve, or this is what we think you need to work on, and it's never what you think. I... I you know, we, we changed the way we did ours and you, you had to rank yourself from one to five. I put five on all of mine. My boss said, you can't put a five on all of them. I said, but I do all of them. I deserve a five. He said, nobody gets fives. I said, then just put on it what you want. You asked me what I thought I deserved and I thought it was all fives. He didn't think that was very funny. But I was wondering what it might be like to get a progress report or a report card from God on those spiritual things. Would we be filled with excitement because we know we've done well, or would we be fearful because we know we didn't do all we could? What kind of a grade would you receive on your godly report card? Would it be an A, a B, a C, a D, an F? Now, I know God doesn't give us report cards, but he does have expectations for us. On most report cards, there is a place that records your attendance. Would you have a perfect attendance? I knew kids. I didn't. I never got it. But I knew a kid never missed one day from kindergarten all through 12th grade. I think he was an alien. Had to be because there ain't, that ain't ever going to happen. I mean, it doesn't happen. didn't happen to me. How about you, Shane? Lord, no. Okay. Anybody else have perfect attendance from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade? You're not through 12th grade yet. You're a kid. But, you know, that's unusual, isn't it? It's the, uh, it's not, it's the exception to the rule. Reuben, you got a report card in your hand? Okay, just checking. I don't want you running off thinking you don't have to do it. So tonight what we're going to talk about is just, you know, spiritual things. But the first thing I want you to write down is attendance. And put on there what you think your grade should be. Nobody's going to see them. Don't share them with anybody. Don't tell anybody. This is just for fun. But Hebrews 10 and 25 says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. That's the only part of that I wanted to read. <laughs> but, you know, it is important that we come together and have fellowship with one another. That's why the Bible said, don't forsake it, to, that we have to come together. And that's how we grow. That's how we learn, is because we come together in attendance to worship the Lord. We gain strength with that. 1 Corinthians 4 and 2 says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And I know you could say that could be with anything, but tonight, it's with your attendance. So give yourself a score of what you think your attendance is for this whole year. You, not how many days you had, but as your attendance goes, do you deserve an A? Do you deserve a B? A C? That's all I want, it's just the letters. So, you know, it's not very popular today for people to assemble themselves together 
or to being faithful because, you know, we can find so many other things to do. I mean, come on, we can go places. We can have a, make up all kinds of excuses why we're not coming. I heard one tonight. I just got off work, and I haven't ate. And I said, I, I haven't ate. And she said, well, I, I'm not coming tonight. I said, that's all I wanted to know. Just say you ain't coming. <laughs> you know, that's fine. But, you know, we make excuses. I'm too tired. My favorite show comes on tonight. I don't feel good, but you serve a God who can heal you, but just go ahead and stay home, lay on the couch. And I'm being funny, or I got to do laundry, I've heard that before, or, you know, Sunday, Sundays is our only day for family. I'm too busy, or, you know what, I just made other plans. It's church night, and you know it's church night, but you made other plans. And I know things that happen, so I'm not judging anybody. But just give yourself a grade on that. Let's see what you got. Our second um, thing for tonight, our second, what was I calling them? Subject for tonight. You got your report card back there? Okay, just checking. Is effort. Now, how much effort have you been putting into serving God? What have you done for Him lately? Have, every time I think of that sentence, I think of, that song, that song, never mind. <laughs> have you grown in him or have you just stayed the same? Have you prepared, studied the Bible, read your Bible, meditated on him? Are you serving God to further the kingdom and not yourself? Can you see growth in you over the past year? Or are you just coming to church to come to church so others can see that you go? So what kind of effort are you putting into it? 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says you have to study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the truth. So to rightly divide the truth, you have to study so that you know the word. 1 Timothy 4 and 14 through 16 says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that, that thy property may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that are near thee. So it's important that we study to show ourselves approved because our lives affect the lives of those around us. People are looking at you. Theon does not have a report card. Well, I count you as one. Get you a report card, girl. She's scared. <laughs> and, and I thought that was kind of, I thought that was a good point. You know, we've got to study to show ourselves approved, but as that says, because when you continue in doctrine and serve the Lord, you both save thyself and them that are in them that hear you. Sometimes we think it's all about us, and we forget that people are watching our lives and we're walking testimony. I told you it was different tonight. So give yourself a grade on that one. And be honest, because nobody's going to see them. This is just for you to reflect upon. So the next thing we're going to talk about is, do you have a godly vision? So write down godly vision, or you could say goals. What are your goals? And do your goals align with God's goals and his plans for your life? Have you made a plan and said, Lord, I want to be closer to you this year? And have you reached that goal? It doesn't have to be a big goal. It doesn't have to be, well, I'm going to be a preacher. It doesn't have to be, I'm going to be a teacher. It could just be that my goal is to be more faithful, that I'm going to study more, that I'm going to witness more. Proverbs 29 and 18 said, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all of your heart. So is your goal to search for him with all of your heart? 
What was your goal this year? You say, well, I don't, I don't know. So write out beside it what your goal is for next year. Lord, I don't have the Holy Ghost. Maybe next year that could be your goal. Or Lord, I just need to be able to read one scripture every day. Or I want to get up, Lord, every morning and read a few scriptures before I go. Help me change my outlook. Write your own goal down there. And then give yourself a grade for what your vision or your goal is. Our next subject is attitude. Do you work well with others? Isn't that always on a report card? Do you judge others? Do you condemn others? Are you forgiving? Are you kind? Do others see Jesus in you? We have to stop and think for a minute that sometimes our attitude, is, our attitude portrays things we really don't want people to see in us. Sometimes it's the bad attitudes that people see and then it hurts our testimony. Luke 6 and 36 through 37 says, Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. That's a mouthful right there. Can you say that you were those things? James 5 and 9 says, Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Only one who's supposed to be doing any judging is our Lord. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Our attitude affects that. Now, if Pastor was here, he'd be all excited, but the next subject is giving. Thank you, brother. I knew nobody else would clap for that one. We have to be giving to those that are around us with, with our love and kindness, but we also have to be faithful and honor God by paying our tithes. And I could preach on that, but that's how our church operates. And that was what God intended for us to do. You say, well, I know it's in the Old Testament, it, but it's not in the New Testament. But he also told you to come together and be of service to one another. And supporting your church is how you service someone. So Luke 6, 38 and 39 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. For years I heard my grandmother say, you need to pay your tithes, you need to give in the offering. And I, I was raised that way. There wasn't an option about it. There wasn't a way to say any other thing about it. And so I just did. But I have never gone hungry because I paid my tithes. I have never... I might not have been able to go get the car that I wanted at the time I wanted it, but I was always, how do I want to say it? I always had what I needed and then some because I was faithful to God. Because out of that faithfulness, He is faithful to us. And it's not just money. I know a lot of us give our service, go above and beyond with our service, just like working ball games. That's how our church prospers, and he uses us to do that. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7 said, But this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as his purpose is in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful, cheerful giver. Blah! I need to take speech again. <laughs> so give yourself a grade. And you say, well, I'm old enough to pay tithes, or God knows my situation. He does. 
But it's not just about the money. It's about your time and your heart. The next one is, do you bear fruit? When they look at you, do they see Jesus? Sister Tyler used to always say, I am not judging anybody, but I am a fruit inspector. And we used to laugh because if somebody really loves Jesus, you're going to see the fruits of the Spirit flowing out of them. You're going to see that love and mercy and all of those things that we need to make it to heaven flowing out of a Christian. I didn't say sometimes we don't get mad. I get mad. Anybody else out there? But I'm just saying, if you love Jesus, you're going to bear the fruit of Jesus. And when they see you, they'll see him. John 15 and 16 says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye shall go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So go and bring forth fruit. He doesn't mean go grow an apple tree. He means your fruit is what you show to those that are lost so that you can win them in. Now, I, didn't, I don't need to see your grades. I may not even see the rest of this sermon. I don't need to see your grades. <laughs> I hit the button and went flying. But I wanted you to see the areas that need improvement. Things that you really need to work on. If you're honest with yourself, we all need to work on some of them. I'm sure that we do. I, don't, I didn't do this to make you feel useless or unworthy, but rather to make you aware that you can make changes and grow for next year. All you have to do is grade yourself. But you also have to stop and think about how's God grading you. If his report card for you was next to the one you just wrote, would they be the same? Sometimes we think we're doing great, but in our hearts we know that we're lacking. Sometimes we think, I am awesome in this area, but there may be an area that you really stink in that God needs you to be aware of so that you can improve on it. It's not a condemnation. It's a way to say, hey, let's make things better. You have to have a vision. You have to be willing to recognize that, hey, sometimes I have areas that I need help in. There are times when I don't read and study enough. There are times when I'm frustrated and the guys at work aren't seeing Jesus in me. There's times y'all are the same. You just stop and think about it for just a minute. The time when you're yelling at your husband, the time when you're yelling at your kid, the time when you told a little lie, but somebody, somebody knew you knew the truth. That time when you could have done what was right, but you chose to go and do something else. That time when you couldn't be faithful, but you thought, okay, I'll just come, I'll just do it my way. But I wanted to give you scriptures to encourage you. If your report card didn't have all A's, anybody have all A's? Shame. What's going on? Yeah, I did. <laughs> so if your report card didn't have all A's, and if you raise your hand, all of us had areas we needed to work in. All of those areas we could improve upon because we're constantly growing and evolving in Christ. He's not done with us. My dad used to say, it's a progressive nature. And the more that I progress around, uh, down the road towards Jesus, the more I progress in my witness and in my ability to live for Jesus. So there's no shame in it, but what it is, is a reality check for us. But John 15 and 11 says this, These things have I spoken unto you that you not may find joy. I'll start all over and read his and not mine. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full nothing to be sad about. It's not like going home and showing my dad a report card that didn't have an A or a B on it. Or like some of these kids that I read the stories about, 
one little boy was asked, do you think you can use paper to warm people? And he said, yes, because I just warmed my tail because dad found my report card. So yes, paper can warm your, warm your body. It, he didn't know what he was saying, but it is true. You know, he said, his mama said, sit down, I want to talk to you about your report card. And he said, I can't sit down. She said, why not? Dad already saw my report card. So you see, it, we could be that way, but our father isn't that way. He knows that we have flaws, that we make mistakes, that sometimes we disappoint ourselves, and sometimes we disappoint him. But he still loves us and still forgives us. He's still giving you that progress report to get you to get up and move. He still urges you to do better. When I don't read and study enough, he's after me. You should have studied more. You should have worked harder. And I know it because I can feel it or I can hear him say it to me. You could have done this had you done that. And I'm thinking, Lord, forgive me, but help me to do it next time. That's how our father is. He's not a condemning father. He wants you to grow into what he sees that he has for you. Psalm, uh, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. How many times do we think we just can't do it? And you and I know we can't do it on our own, but we can do it through Jesus. Psalm 62, 6 through 8 says this, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense, and I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him, and he is a refuge for you, Selah. I thought, how many times would we stop and look at our report cards and think we have fallen short? But he is still there for us. He's still calling out for us. We just have to trust him. Hey, Lord, I'm a little weak in this area, and I need help. Lord, I need help. You can't be like the college kid who didn't study for the test, didn't take notes, but the night before is praying, dear God, please just help me pass it and I'll do better next time. It doesn't work that way. Not in college. It doesn't work that way. But that's why he tells us to study to show ourselves approved. So that when those things come against us, we have a good foundation. So, let me see, I've lost my spot. Okay, and then Romans 8, 37 through 39. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a great promise. I was thinking as I wrote this about McKenna, and uh, I could see her in a classroom, and she's pretty sharp, so I could see her in a classroom, and I could see her reading the kids that are in that classroom. She can tell you by the look of that child's face if they studied, if they did their homework, if they prepared for class, and my Jesus is looking at you tonight, wanting to know if you have prepared. He already knows. But what he needs you to, real, to say is, you're not preparing the way I wanted you to prepare. He's just trying to urge you to get up and say, hey, Lord, you know, I want to advance in you. I wrote my goal down for next year. But, Lord, I need to be able to improve in some of these areas. You can't all be like me and put fives on your progress report and then have your boss say, nobody makes fives. I think he was a little crazy when he said that to me. But, you know, there's always room for improvement. Improvement in how we seek Him, improvement in how we worship Him, improvement in how we allow Him to use us. You know, no matter what our grades were tonight, there's always room for improvement. There's no condemnation in a low grade, but rather a better opportunity for growth. You can look at it that way and be disappointed and say, man, I'm failing God, or you can look at it and say, God, this is an area you can improve me in so that I can please you. We can't compare ourselves to each other because he didn't make us all the same. But we can only compare ourselves to what God's plan is for us. And for us to become that, we have to make preparations for us to reach that goal. So what I'm challenging you with tonight is to tuck away that report card that you made for yourself today. 
and maybe in two or three months come back and look at it and say, you know, that goal is obtainable because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Or you say, well, I'm a little weak here, but Lord, give me a desire to read and study more and help me to have an understanding of it. See, that's all on you. Because as the, the preacher, I delivered the message. But not to condemn you, but to say, hey, look, all of us, if we had a report card, we'd find a place that we need to work on something. And so I want to challenge you tonight to start seeking the Lord and asking, what is it you have for me? What is it that you want me to do? Lord, help me to improve here. Help me to improve there. Help me to make a sacrifice so that I can give of myself, of my finances, so that I can be a better witness to you, Lord. Change my attitude. Change the way I see things. Change the way I react to things. And then maybe next year we'll do another report card and just see what kind of improvements we made. But remember, that's just between you and God. And what you really want from Him, you can have if you're willing to settle in and serve and seek Him for those things. Amen? Hi, everyone. I'm Corbin Chris Heineken, the Dean of Arkansas Sportscasters and host of Rest of the Excel. We'll say a special thank you for reasoning to Amplify Jesus with us here today. No matter where you are, if you join us live here at Resonate Church, whether you're joining us nationwide courtesy of your local syndicated television stations across the country, or if you join us internationally and globally courtesy of our YouTube simulcast. Thanks so much for Resonating Jesus with us. Now, you ask it, and you say, corporate, you know, Resonate, you know, you guys always bless us. But we want to turn around and bless you through the act of worship called giving. How do we do it? Like you ask. We are. Multiple ways. Four of them in particular on which you can resonate your giving. Check it out. Number one. Join us live and in person here at Resonate Church at a brand new location. 3702 East Highland Drive. It is directly across the street from All Star Music in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Sundays, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Wednesday nights at 6.30, and we do keep in mind, things schedule subject to change. Option number two, online. That's a little timely thing right there. Use the term Resonate Church AR. That's right, everything right there on the screen. Resonate Church AR if you want to resonate your giving online. Just follow the directions, and you can do that safely and securely. Option three, the cell phone. Look, we all got one. Might as well use it, shall we? What resident you're giving using your cell phone? All you gotta do, text the word give to that number right there on your screen. Safe, fast, secure, easy, simple to do. Option four, mailing. You wanna mail your contributions to us, courtesy of a check or money order? Please make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. Once again, if you want to resonate your giving courtesy of a mailing option. Send your check or money order. Make all checks and money orders payable to Resonate Church and send it to that address on your screen. And those are the ways you can resonate your giving. And remember, show love, your peace. Buddy. How are you, bro? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Woo. Man, you came out of wrestling, man. <laughs> you know it's all good, man. Woo. Son of us talking about it. Hey, why don't you come join us? Sundays, 10 a.m. Come join us. Woo. Sunday night's scheduled to change. Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, 6.30. It's on. Our women's ministry is strong and rooted. <sighs> Our men's ministry has a solid rock foundation. All the kids can have so much fun. So can you! Our church is a great family church. And your family will love it too. Come join us at Resonate. So love, give peace. Resonate, Resonate Jesus. Pam. Thank you 
Thank you very much. Wow. Let me throw the question at you. Do you literally take notes on this one? How's your grading system looking? Are you pretty good in all of them? No, averaging, no, depending on the letters or the number system that you use. What does your report card look like? In the fake department, what's your grade? I mean, in all honesty, and I'll be, I'll be real with you with the public. I normally use a little bit of a number system for my faith level. And anything that's really five and below means your faith, you know, your faith level sucks. But you know, Lately, my faith level, and I, I, I sat down and I, 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 talked, I talked with Pastor Brian Adams about this. I sat down and, honestly speaking, I can actually legitimately say that my faith level has been so sky high, I didn't even know it was sky high. Just being real. Here's my question to you. Is your faith level sky high? That doesn't mean I'm better than everybody else, so please don't get any crazy thoughts. It means that bottom line, my faith level and trust level in God is so high that even when I no when even when it's just something that comes up and I just no. It's perfect. Perfect, whatever. I'm like, God, you got this. My faith level is so high, if a storm comes up, God, you got this. I'm just going to trust you and chill out. Is your faith level like that? What's your grade for, for holiness being your attitude and not your dress? What's your grade on that? And notice I said, that's broken up in, in, in categories. Notice I said holiness as an attitude, not as a dress. What's your grade on that? Are you literally, and uh, we'll break that down. Are you literally wearing your Halloween costume, your fake costume, the Sunday morning worship? Just fit in and say, oh yeah, everything good. But then you take that costume off when you go home. Are you being real with yourself? Like for real? Are you grading yourself on your attitude? Are you grading yourself on your trust in God? Are you grading yourself on meditation of His Word? What, what, what's your grading system looking like? If we're all real with ourselves and real with God, we all really, really give ourselves that end. And that end says need to root. Because word says we all fall short. There's not one person perfect. With the exception of God and all three variations. We all fall short. But also, God still respect of persons. It means he has no favorites. What's your grade system look like? And what's the deal with your poor card? God, thank you so much for us. Thank you, South Twizzle. God, help us to improve any and everything that's on that report card list. Help us to improve to be better spiritually. God, thank you so much for wrestling yourself. Thank you at home for watching. Hey, ain't no service like a live wrestling service. That's right, folks. It's live and in person. Trust me, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter the race, it doesn't matter the nationality. Hey, I'm full nationalities, believe it or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't
Guess what? You're all welcome right here at Red State Church. There you see the info right there. It's great. It's live and it's awesome. Please come join us, will ya? And the four ways you rest that you give me, rest at churchjonesworld.com as the other option. And all the preachers, news, scoops, views, info, so much more. And breaking news, facebook.com forward slash rest at churchjonesworld. And you watch this program on Cybercast. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, ding ding, that way you ain't miss anything. And hey, come join us this Sunday night. Right here on Red State South, got another awesome one for you. Join us, will you? In prime time, right after your late local news on this station, and also 11 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube simulcast. Join us, will you? For our entire crew, I'm Chris Hodgkin. We say to you, show love, give peace, you know it. Resident Jesus, we'll see you Sunday night right here on Red State South. Join us, will you? Good night, Canada. Good night, everyone. See you Sunday night. So long. Neither day.